In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these three wooden builds. Welcome to David's DIY Reviews. On this channel, we do a lot of woodworking tool tutorials and little woodworking builds like this, kind of quick half hour builds. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for a lot more really great content. And guys, uh, dimensions and instructions will be in the description below in case you need them to, you know, build these yourself. Let's get into it. So the first step is going to be laying out our pieces to cut them to size. Uh, the, the base length of mine is going to be uh, 12 inches or a foot. It'll be a bit over a foot because of the, the width of the ends. But we'll mark it at a foot. We'll draw a line across. You're definitely probably going to want to use a, a square of some sort, especially on your base, because it's a lot wider. You want to make sure your piece is at 90. And if you're starting with a straight stock, just check that end to make sure it's square as well, or it's just not going to be square in the end. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, cut off our base. This is going to be a really important cut to make. You're going to want to make sure that um, this cut is really straight, really square. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll just finish cutting this and then we'll move on to laying out the sides and cutting them. And the base of the uh, box I'm making is a piece of uh, 1x8 poplar. I'm using poplar. The 1x8 is actually 7 and a quarter by 3 quarter. You could use any, any size wood you want. All the dimensions and instructions for this box will be in the description below. The sides of my box are going to be a piece of 1x4, which is actually 3.5 by 3 quarter inch. So we'll make two sides, so we'll mark them at one foot as well. Remember, you don't want to mark both at the same time because the curve of your saw is going to end up making the second one smaller. So we'll mark one, we'll go ahead and cut it, then we'll mark the other and cut it as well. And I'm going to make these, actually I'll mention now, the same length as the base because the ends are what's going to stick past the sides once these are nailed on a side like that. So I've cut my first side, uh, I marked the second one, we'll go ahead and cut that now and then we'll get on to marking and cutting the end. And after that we'll be getting right into assembly. So we'll finish cutting this, do the sides, then we'll start building. Sometimes too, when you're making a project with symmetrical pieces like this, it's a good idea to mark them where they fit together because sometimes you'll forget and you'll put this on that side and it won't quite fit perfectly. I mean, if everything's cut perfect, perfect, it shouldn't matter what end is what. But if you're cutting with hand tools and it's not exactly perfect, sometimes marking it is a good idea or marking top and bottom, left and right or front and back, it's going to help you along the way. Also now that we've got all of our pieces cut out, it's probably a good idea just to give all your ends a nice little sand. Go around, sand all your ends up now, because it's going to be much easier to do now than it will later. So we'll go ahead and sand everything up now. So we're ready for assembly now, and the first thing I'm going to do is nail the sides on the base, because you can get them just perfectly flush, and then we'll nail the ends on. If you nail the ends on first, it might be hard to get it lined up perfectly. So we'll go ahead, we'll probably pre-start my nails. I'll just do three little nails down the side. And I'm just using some nice little finishing nails to not have a big nail head. You can use nails with big heads if you like, if you want that look. And remember, all the dimensions and instructions will be in the description below. So we'll go ahead and start assembling. And um, when you're pre-setting your nails in the bottom, just remember that the thickness of the base, this isn't the base, but it's the same thickness. The thickness of your base is 3 quarters of an inch. So you're going to want your, you can kind of eyeball it, but you're going to want your nails 3 eighths of an inch up from the bottom so that they will go right into the middle of the base when this nail is on. So we'll go ahead and we'll start getting some of these nails set. The middle one you can measure to center if you want. I'm just going to eyeball it because you won't really see it up against the other side. Probably would be a good idea to measure it to get exactly center, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. So there's many different ways you could go about setting this up to nail it. However you feel comfortable holding uh, your project. I'm going to kind of stand it up like this so that 
I don't lose any power of my hammering down through holding it sideways. So we'll just get the nail started and get it in there. So we'll just finish nailing this side on and then we'll move on to the ends. And so when I nail the ends on here, I would probably nail the bottom first because if these side pieces are wanting to flex in and out, if you nail the bottom first, you can kind of tweak the top of this around to line it up just perfectly. So we'll nail the bottoms, one nail on the bottom, one nail on the top. And if you want, you could probably put one center, but I'll probably just do two in each side. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So I've moved off my bench to the floor here. It's just a little more of a solid surface to nail. So like I was saying, when you're nailing this end on, don't worry too much about lining the bottom up. We want to get the top lined up perfectly. I've got this, this corner nailed in so that my top is flush. So you want to kind of hold the side and the end even. And like I said, we'll nail that bottom one in first. And then we can kind of tweak that top side around when we nail that in to get it just perfectly flush. And we'll go ahead and do the other side just the same. We got the nail, the bottom nailed in flush and flat. We get that top corner nice and straight and we'll nail it in. And just like that, we've got a nice finished product, a nice little wooden box. You can do anything with this. You could paint it, you could stain it, you could leave it raw. You can do anything you want with this. It's a nice little quick build, about a 10 minute build. And like I said, instructions, dimensions in the description below. And this was a really good one. Now for this balancing wine holder, the first thing you want to do is just cut your piece to length. You're going to want it to be eight and a half inches long. So I'll just take my line there. And then you're going to want the hole to be two inches from the top and that's going to make it balance just perfectly. So I've gone ahead and marked center. Now you're going to want to drill this hole around anywhere from an inch and a quarter to an inch and five eighths. And then the angle on the end is going to want to be 45 degrees. And once you've cut it, that's going to make it balance and stand up just perfectly. Now you could use a hole saw for this. You could use a hand drill. You could use, you know, a, a drill bit that big if you had one. I'm going to go ahead and use this Forstner bit because it works really well. And it's going to make a nice clean cut. Now the next step is going to be cutting the end off at 45 degrees. Now this can be a little tricky. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, Make my line here across the top at 45 degrees. I've got my line drawn down this side. And I'm going to actually draw a line down the other side as well. So I can follow that down with the saw as I cut. Now you're going to want to go ahead and make that 45 degree cut. Now all that's left to do is sand up your edges really quick. And you've got a finished product. So the first thing I've done is laid out and drawn my sign, which mine is going to say open. And my sign is going to be an indoor sign, so I've just gone ahead and used paper and marker. If you were going to do an outdoor sign, you might want to actually paint it on or use something a little more durable. So I'm going to go ahead and cut mine out. That way you know kind of what size to actually make your sign itself. So we'll go ahead and cut this out, and then we'll move on to, to making the sign. So I've got a cut out now and I'm going to be using a poplar. This is a piece of one by eight. So that actually makes it um, seven and a quarter inches wide. So I'm going to leave that about a three quarters of an inch gap. My sign is it's um, six by 11. So I've got a bit of a gap on the sides and I'll do a bit bigger of a gap on the ends. I'll do a one inch gap on each end. So that'll um, make my overall length 13 inches. So I'll go ahead and mark 13. And uh, you're going to want this to be nice and square. So if you have a, a square of any kind, I would definitely recommend using that to make your line. And also, all the uh, tools and equipment I'm using to make this sign will be in the description below. So have a look down there if you need anything to work with. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, cut this out now. And this is going to be arguably the most difficult part of this build because you're going to want this cut to be perfectly square and straight. So if there was a point in time during this build you're going to take your time, now would be the time. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut this out. So we'll just finish cutting this off and then we'll move on to putting the, the frame on the side. So 
So the next step is going to be cutting out the pieces for the frame. So we're going to have the top portion of the frame stick out past the edges. So what that means is the sides will butt up against it like this. So you're going to want to kind of kind of lay your, your setup dry like this. So that way you can get the perfect measurement to cut this so that this will be nice and flush. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And the material I'm using for the frame is one by two, which is actually going to be three quarter by one and three quarter. And that's a nice height to kind of give it the sign some depth. So like I said, I've got this side flush. So we'll go ahead and turn my pencil the right way around and mark that. And we'll start cutting the sides out. So I'm just finishing cutting my second uh, top piece of the frame and then we'll move on to the sides. And I'll show you guys how you go about making those fit just perfectly. So go ahead and I'll finish cutting this off. And it's always a good idea to kind of sand up your edges as you go. I mean, you can sand them all at the end, but when you're trying to dry fit your project as you're building it, it's good to have all your edges really nice and clean. So now we're going to be uh, figuring out the dimension that is going to be the side of our frame. So you're going to want to make sure these stand nice and straight. If they're moving around and kind of could be on an angle, you're going to want to clamp it so that they actually stand straight and your measurement will be precise. Mine are sitting pretty straight, so we're going to take that measurement. And mine's looking to be actually conveniently seven and a quarter right on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two more pieces of one by two at seven and a quarter, and then we'll get into assembly. And what I would do at this point is just test fit that first piece you cut and make sure it fits perfectly so that way your second one will be perfect and you don't have to do two a second time. And it looks like it works nicely, so I'll go ahead and cut my second one now. And these uh, sides of the frame, these are going to be the most technically accurate pieces that re you require. And so you're going to want to make sure you're cutting on the waist side of the line or you're not going to end up with the right dimension. So we'll go ahead and finish cutting the sides. So one more time, we'll probably dry fit all the pieces to make sure we like it and we're happy with it. So when we assemble, we're going to like the way it looks. And it's looking like it's all going to go together quite nicely. We can set our sign in there, see what we think. I think it's going to look really good. So now we'll get into assembly. So I'm going to be using just uh, two inch kind of flathead nails. And I'm probably going to do three along the long side, two on the other side. And I'll probably actually measure these out so that they sit perfectly where I want them. And I'm probably also going to pre-drill because poplar is a, it's fairly hard and it tends to crack. If you're using pine, something like that, you probably don't need to. But I'm going to measure these out, lay them out, drill them out, and we'll keep on going on. Yeah, keep on going on. That's right. So I'm just finishing laying out my last uh, couple nail holes and then we'll move on. I'll show you how to drill it and we'll start nailing it together. So I'm going to pre-drill these holes uh, just very slightly bigger than the nail itself. You can pre-drill them the same size, slightly bigger. It'll work. So I'm going to stick them in my vise here. This is a little bench clamp on vise. The neatest little handy uh, vise I've really ever had. And like I said, links to all these tools and equipment will be in the description below. So we'll go ahead and we'll start drilling these out and we'll start putting it together. Minor um, technical difficulty there. Make sure your drill bit is tight in your chuck. If you're missing a chuck key, well, it is what it is. And as you're moving all the pieces to your uh, project around, there's a chance you might lose track of which piece goes on which side. So it's not a, be a bad idea to mark them as you're going but it's not necessary if they're all the same, but not a bad idea no matter what. So we'll finish drilling up this last piece now. And yes, I managed to get my drill bit tight in the chuck. Kind of an ongoing issue with uh, me if you've seen my older videos. But nevertheless, we press on. So we've got all our nails started, now we'll go ahead and we'll drive them in. Being, sorry, and being that this is a bit of a rustic piece, I'm not too worried about the hammer hits on the wood or anything like that because we're just kind of kind of rough it up at the end and this is going to look really good. So now we'll go ahead and nail our, our long sides on. All you got to do is kind of, you know, eyeball it up even on both ends. If it's not perfect, perfect, you just kind of even the gap on both sides. Like I said, this is <laughs> kind of ironically the, the good part about building kind of farmhouse rustic builds is that when it's not perfect, 
it just kind of adds to it, you know. If you want to make something like this absolutely perfect, you can. It'll be a totally different look, but this is kind of what I'm going for, so we'll keep on going. And you're probably also going to want to put a nail through, um, kind of in the top here, going into the end, to keep this from having any movement. So we'll nail through here, like that. I'll probably use a bit shorter of a nail for this, just to reduce the risk of splitting. So we'll go ahead and nail it up. Perfect. And if you're uh, still watching at this point, thank you very much. And if you are still watching, you'll notice that this would also double really nicely. It's kind of a tabletop serving tray, but that's not really what we're building. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to put the sign in. What I'm actually going to nail the my sign in the middle to give it kind of that nailed on older look. And if you were doing an outdoor sign, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea anyway, just for some uh, rigidity. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll just kind of eyeball this in place. I mean, you could measure it and get it absolutely perfect, but it's close enough to the edges that you probably don't have to. So we'll just get it in place there. And you can always redo this easily. I'm just going to use these little three quarter inch nails and we'll start uh, tacking it down. You don't have to nail it in like this. This is just the, an idea I had that I thought would be a nice look. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So like I said guys, dimensions and instructions will be in the description below. Also in the description below is David's DIY Reviews merchandise and links to all the tools and equipment used in this video. So guys, see you in the next one.